Hello guys and welcome back to Blocks Royalty. For this video, we'll be talking about Roblox Solo Blocks. Is it the next hot game? But before anything else, please leave a like on the video and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell icon down below so you won't miss any of our future uploads. Without any more interruptions, let's just go ahead and dive straight into it. Okay, so let's talk about the game. First of all, it's an RPG, so there are many universes here. Dungeons are enclaves of chaos that are connected to the human world via gates. They usually house a swarm of creatures led by a boss, and they stay open until the boss is killed. The dungeon will remain open for around an hour after the boss is destroyed before closing on its own. It should be remembered that a dungeon must be cleaned within seven days to avoid the loss of human life as much as possible. If it isn't, it will experience a dungeon break, which means that the monsters inside the dungeon will be able to cross over over into the human world and assault civilians. The dungeons in the human world are connected via gates, which are magical portals. Gates are usually blue in color and can appear anywhere, including inside a high school, on the side of a highway, or in the middle of an abandoned neighborhood. They will remain open until the dungeons to which they led are cleaned. The traditional SE ranking system is used to categorize the threat level of a gate, much as it is with hunters and magical monsters. As a result, E rank gates are considered low risk, but S rank gates declare a state of emergency for entire countries. Higher ranking gates are likewise larger, with D rank gates being around the size of enormous doors and S rank gates being so large that they resemble hurricanes. Quests or duties at Sung Jin Woo must perform after reawakening as a player. They emerged out of nowhere after he reawakened as a player. He receives various awards for completing the affirmation objectives, loot such as objects or money that he can only use in his own pop-up store, access to new level talents or a boost in the character's experience in order to learn new skills and abilities, or any combination of the above. There are also different guilds. Raid gates are raided by guilds, which are organized groups of hunters. The guild master is the guild's leader, and the guild master of a country's top guilds is usually an S-rank hunter. High-level hunters are frequently recruited by the elite guilds, who offer huge bonuses based on rank. As a result, joining a prominent guild guarantees high wages and a higher level of safety, as raids are meticulously planned and executed. Lower guilds, on the other hand, recruit just about everyone they can get their hands on and have a habit of raiding dungeons that are far too difficult for them to handle. As a result, joining a lower guild is fraught with danger and carries a far greater fatality rate. So who will be playing? Well, there are many races on this. Hunters are magically gifted people who use their abilities to fight and kill magical monsters. They initially appeared at the same time as humans, became aware of magic's existence. As hunters proved to be the only ones capable of killing magical monsters and closing gates, a multi-billion dollar industry grew up around them. Hunters are ranked according to their strength using an international SE system, with E being the weakest and S being the strongest, and have a wide range of talents. Hunters are divided into two categories, combat and non-combat with six distinct subtypes, fighters, mages, assassins, tankers, rangers, and healers. The denizens of chaos, commonly known as magic beasts, are magical monsters that live in dungeons. Because of the ruler's machinations, the vast majority of them are exceedingly hostile to humanity. Their power levels vary from person to individual, much like the hunters who combat them, and hence their threat levels are classified using the same SE ranking system. Magic animals, despite their appearance as mindless monsters, are capable of forging their own gear and can be as clever as humans, with some even speaking human languages. They also have a runic alphabet and their own language, which humans refer to as beast language or monster tongue. Finally, shadows are a race of undead monsters that the Shadow Monarch can produce with a shadow extraction skill from murdered beasts and hunters. There's so much to unpack from this game though. What do you all think of it? Are you going to play it? Why or why not? Make sure to let us know exactly what you think in the comments down below as we'd love to hear your thoughts. That's all the time we have for you guys today though, so thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, then be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel too if you haven't already for more awesome Roblox content like this and much more. We'll see you all in the next one, but until then, goodbye!